The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health presents Caution, Foundry at Work. Over the past century, although new machinery and modern chemistry have enhanced productivity many fold, the basic processes of the foundry have changed little. Melting, molding, and pouring are as much a part of the workday as ever. As can be expected, the historical hazards of foundry work remain as well. Silica, metal fumes, toxic gases, noise, and heat still pose serious health threats to workers. Although these risks have not been eliminated, exposure to them can be minimized. Thanks to advancing technology and the benefit of scientific research, the dusty, black, atmosphered foundry should be an image whose time has passed, replaced by a modern, safety-conscious work environment. Today's foundry is a massive recycler. The scrapyard is aptly named a depository for discarded metal from countless sources. The rusty gear, broken wheel, and crumpled fender all find their way from the scrap pile to the foundry furnace to be reformed, reshaped, reused. When the scrap is melted and poured, it emits fumes which, if inhaled, may be hazardous to a worker's health. This risk is especially great if the original scrap material contains unknown contaminants or toxic components such as lead, nickel, and chromium. As the molten metal leaves the furnace, it vaporizes and condenses in the cool air into extremely fine particles called fumes. There are two complementary means of protecting workers from these airborne metal fumes, ventilation and isolation. Notice the arrangement of hoods and exhaust ducts over the furnace. These types of close-fitting controls capture the metal fumes at their source and remove them from the work environment. Since a smaller volume of air is required by the close capture technique, purchasing and operating costs for dust collection equipment are reduced. Because pouring usually requires direct worker involvement in a potentially hazardous environment, isolation can be employed to protect the worker not only from metal fumes, but from intense heat and exposure to metal splash. In this example, the worker operates the shuttle ladle from inside a booth with its own separate ventilation system. Thus, both principles, isolation and ventilation, are at work in this one device. As the ladle tracks, the worker remains inside the booth, controlling its operations. When the ladle reaches its destination, it is met by an exhaust hood, which will capture the fumes produced by the pouring process. Close-fitting or at-the-source controls, such as hoods, are recommended under the following circumstances. Toxic contaminants are being generated. A worker is physically close to the process. Uncontrolled emissions would cause a serious safety hazard, such as reduced visibility, fire, or explosion. For smaller ladles, which are hand-operated, ventilation alone can do the job. This setup takes a three-pronged approach. A hood in close proximity to the pouring process draws in the fumes emitted by the metal. Supply air ducts located above the ladle operator provide clean, cool air for the worker during pouring. Ladle covers are beneficial as well. A hinged cover reduces the fume-generating potential of pouring and the radiant heat. Automation can be an effective tool for reducing exposure as well as enhancing productivity. This automated pourer employs both isolation and ventilation. The rotary pourer has multiple spouts which are surrounded by a circular hood. It is operated and monitored from the safety of a remote platform. Possibly the greatest threat to air quality in foundries is crystalline silica, the primary constituent of molding sand. Although silica sand is the most commonly used mold material, there are safer substitutes available such as olivine. Unfortunately, these materials are more expensive and not compatible with the chemistries of some binder systems. Where silica sand is used in molds and cores, effective dust control is a necessity. Prolonged exposure to airborne silica can lead to silicosis, a disabling and sometimes fatal fibrosis of the lung, other respiratory diseases, and cancer. Excessive silica exposure can increase the risk of lung cancer.
The disease most closely linked to silica exposure is silicosis, an irreversible condition in which dust particles become lodged in the tiny terminal branches of the lungs. This causes fibrosis or scarring of the lung tissue, which seriously impairs the mechanics of breathing. Since there is no cure for silicosis, preventive measures are imperative. The cleaning of formed castings, which contain dry sand, presents the biggest risk of silica inhalation. Again, isolation and ventilation are the keys to protecting the worker. This structure is a completely enclosed shakeout operation. As castings move along the conveyor, the loose silica is shaken from them. Personnel do not enter this room, and it is ventilated so that the dust does not escape into work areas. Likewise, this shaker pan is completely enclosed as it shakes the castings free of silica. Again, the necessary exhaust is present. This crane, which removes unfinished castings after shakeout, provides the operator a clean, temperature-controlled environment. Manual cleaning and finishing can be made safer by the use of exhaust ventilation. Because the workers are so close to the dust source, in some cases the use of NIOSH-approved respirators may be necessary. However, some hand tools, such as saws and chippers, can be fitted with their own exhaust systems that capture dust at its source. Advanced machinery such as this shot blaster or this enclosed automated grinder provide maximum protection from silica inhalation. The machines take the abuse, not the worker. As an additional measure of protection, cores should be coated only with low or non-silica wash in order to minimize the silica content of the dust generated by the finishing process. In fact, all foundry machinery, from mullers to shakeouts, which involve dry silica sand, should be effectively exhausted or isolated from the worker. We have already seen a number of enclosed control booths for protection against both metal fumes and silica. These controls need not be limited to specific machinery. Enclosed working areas of all types and sizes housing a broad range of equipment, shield workers from dust and fumes, as well as heat and noise. The controls that have been put in place in the foundry over the years have, uh, have been cost effective and much planning has taken place to, to put those controls in place so that both production and quality and safety can work hand in hand in that area. Uh, when I first started here uh, approximately 30 years ago, it was uh, it was so dusty out there in the foundry that you could hardly even see your hand in front of your face. You couldn't, it was just, it was terrible. And over the years we've uh, implemented uh, exhaust systems and, up, and keep upgrading them. And uh, now, as you can see, you can, you can see from one end of the foundry to the other. Regardless of foundry size, product, or output, airborne hazards can and must be controlled. By following the principles of ventilation and isolation, there are a number of inventive, cost-effective ways to protect any foundry's workforce. Continuous attention to this critical area will ensure that all workers can safely meet the demands of the job in a foundry at work.